Hey, move your mic. Oh, God, hold on. Take that mic cord right there. Just reach down. That's it. It's touching that mic, that cord right there. <laughs> I don't know how you're gonna fix it though, but that's the thing. Oh, you know what? Drape it around the top of that corner. Oh, I got two of the guys. <laughs> Broadcasting live from Studio X in the great country of Texas, I'm Scott Allen Turner on a mad mission to help you get financial independence, ultimate happiness, and a life full of awesome experiences. If you've got a question I can answer on the show, scott at scottallenturner.com, or you can type it in during the live stream. We check those during the break, and sometimes I even check my email. I do check my phone when I don't turn it off. If you caught the last hour of the show, we got a scam alert and a, a lesson on extended warranties. But I'm not going to give out my cell phone number on the show. So I'm not going to get that. Change the way you think and manage money. This was from, I think it was from USA Today. Revisit this book all the time when people ask me about, hey, what book would you recommend someone read for an aggressive personal finance? Top of the list of any personal finance expert out there, at least number one, two, or three, is always going to be The Millionaire Next Door by the late Thomas Stanley and William Danko, but more so towards Thomas Stanley. He's wanted to put all the research into it. <clears throat> and this we'll revisit some of these comments this person had to say. He said, personally, the best money book I have ever read taught me about perspective. By reading this book, I found myself with a completely new mindset, and as a result, my entire life started to evolve. That's a little overly dramatic there, but uh, when you read this book, and this is a refresher, I recommend people read this book at least, well, just once a year would be plenty, not at least, <laughs> to reframe the mind and rethink about why you're doing what you're doing. Rethink spending, manage money a little bit differently or better or improve. The same reason I myself continue to read personal finance books or read blogs, Follow some of the advisors each week. See what's new going and get positive reinforcement. Otherwise, we fall out of the good habits that we have developed over the years and go right back into bad habits. Or sometimes things just don't crop up all the time. It may be a financial situation that only comes up every five years and somebody forgets. So these are just little reminders. My comment on this book, when I always hear the title, what always seems to stick out to me is the the stories in there about Rolex watches. Now, Vince Neil, lead singer of Motley Crue, he's always wearing a Rolex watch <laughs> in all of his pictures. He's got a really big, bright white one I've seen with him in many, many pictures. But Vince Neil is also worth something like $50 million if he wants to go out and spring fifteen grand for a, a Rolex. More power to him. Or... If you caught the last hour of the show, if you wanted to spring $160,000 on a Breitling for a Bentley, he can do that too, because to him, that's a happy meal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the rich pretenders, as I, they call them, the RIPs, they finance a Rolex so that they can be seen wearing it. So in this book, it's noted that millionaires have Rolexes. However, they got them as gifts. They're not running out there, most of them are not running out there buying them for themselves. Again, sales awards, hey, you've worked for the company 20 years, here's your gift, a pat on the back for something you got a big deal, whatever it happened to be. Um, around here, Maddie and Anthony, they get the jumbo Reese's peanut butter cups mm -hmm. for <laughs> the amazing service right. and work they do. We're not at the Rolex level yet, and I'm not a Rolex person myself, so I don't think you guys are ever gonna get one of those either. <laughs> I'm okay with the Reese's cups, to be honest. They're pretty tasty. <laughs> This author of the article continues, very few books resonate with me as much as The Millionaire Next Door. It was one of the main catalysts for how I currently deal with money and practice frugality. I will stop right there. Yes, in the book, they talk about frugality. Frugality is not the single path to building wealth or getting to millionaire status. Certainly, being frugal in some areas of some parts of your life will contribute to getting there quicker or getting there at all. Can't spend it all and build wealth. That doesn't work. So you have to save some. And if you can find more areas in your life to save more for things that aren't important, you get there quicker. That's the frugality component of it. It's not about living in squalor 
and wearing holy sweaters, living in a tiny apartment, dying at age 90 with $50 million in the bank that gets donated to a hospital <laughs> uh, named after some dead dude or dudette that nobody's ever heard of. I digress. Uh, begin in debt is standard for many millionaires, the article says. We may think that even the rich, we may think that even the rich have debt just like us. That doesn't make sense. Uh, according to the book, many millionaires don't acquire debt. Instead, the wealthy look to grow their wealth by investing early and contributing often. Investing in what? Business, real estate, stock market. One of those three, typically. In the stock market, if you've got an employer-sponsored retirement plan, there's your stock market. There's your one for you. Building wealth that way. Simple, easy. Anybody can do it. A lot easier than business and real estate. Debt, the book says, lies mostly in the lower to middle class. Mainly the people that strive for status and acceptance by their friends are the ones who go into debt and trying to look like they are rich. When I read this, the author continues, I realized that I needed to become debt free. It was my first step to achieving wealth and success with money. And if you're looking at, oh, we could say a chart, timeline, scale, anything related to a graph type of picture with a line down the middle. Most people, I'd say probably 99% of the people I'm familiar with and have researched, read, interviewed, start below that line of zero, negative net worth. So they start in debt. Then you get up to the zero and then you go up beyond that into positive territory. That's the typical path, millionaires included. Number two, most millionaires do not come from wealth or inherit money. That's correct. According to the book, 9%. So nine, nine out of 10. No, sorry, one out of 10. Slightly less than one out of 10. People who have wealth, success, became millionaires, had some type of inheritance slash help. Now people think, oh, you inherited your money. You must have inheritance. For some reason, the brain always seems to go to a million dollars. Oh, you inherited money? Oh, you inherited a million dollars? No, you could inherit $10,000. <laughs> you can inherit $100,000. You could inherit $100 million. It just depends. But this book profiles people who have a net worth between one and $10 million. So one out of 10 of them inherited some type of money. And typically, it's a very small amount, not enough to set them up for life whatsoever. Millionaires and billionaires are generally frugal, the author says. Makes sense. You can't spend it all and expect to have wealth. And their next point is the small daily habits that make all the difference with your money. And that's the truth. It is the small daily habits, which compound over time. Another great book, not related to, I think they talk about money in this book. I haven't read it in a while. Related to personal finance, personal growth is the compound effect which that does a great job of explaining compounding and the power of compounding, whether it's related to finance or health or the great example I've read years ago. It was a very famous NBA coach, National Basketball League, for the Miami Heat running out of time. And he challenges all his players to get 1% better in different aspects of their game. And they did that over time. Then they eventually went on to win a championship. 1%, 1%, get 1% better. And that compounds over time. Fascinating. We'll be back in a minute. Scott Allen Turner. Do you know what you learned or didn't learn about money as a kid still affects your spending habits today? That's why Scott wrote the best-selling children's book, Money A to Z, because he wanted not only to teach our four-year-old twins about money, saving, giving, and sharing, but your kids too. It's never too early to start learning about money. And if you don't have kids yet, Money A to Z makes a great gift for your nieces, nephews, or any kids you need to buy a birthday present for. Money A to Z. You can get it now on Amazon.
Oh, never buy these things online. I'm ready. Okay. Things you can't return. And they've got a picture of a, a chair, a big puppy chair. That requires reading the fine print. So I bought true. stuff before that I've got stuck with. Wedding gowns. Yeah, it does have to be fit. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't get a suit online. Oh, would I? Yeah, I'd get a suit off eBay. <laughs> yeah? yeah? More power to you. I say that because I'm thinking of Scott Whelan. He had a, a clothing line through a brand called Inger's Laundry. And mm -hmm. I've owned several of his shirts. And they're very stylish. But he had a suit. He was very stylish. I don't know if you've ever noticed. He was always fashionable. But he had a suit made by English Laundry. And I always wanted one. But they were slim fit. And that's not how I'm built. <laughs> so, <laughs> and they were only available on eBay. Interesting. It was a short-lived clothing line. I bet. But I have some of the shirts, and you can't buy them anymore, so they could go. Probably not going to go up about. I don't know. I would say I would say with the wedding dress or even the suit. I mean, like you're going to have to spend money to get it tailored, anyways. Right. If you really like the one on the internet, yeah, it just might, get the material. It might work out. Yeah. Produce. That makes sense. Yeah. Oh. Ugh. Vehicles. I think uh, I have to talk to my brother. He bought a Lexus off eBay once. This is off years and years eBay. ago. Off eBay? Yes. He That's did on interesting. It. And I don't know if it was another state or not. I'm going to talk about that. I, I know, a, I know Anthony found his car on Facebook Marketplace, but we went and like, met them yeah, checked in it out. person and like, yeah. saw it first. Kicked the tires. That's yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Physically, yes, there is a tire there. <laughs> Pillows. Totally disagree with that. That's where I got my pillow. I don't know why you wouldn't be able to just buy a pillow on the internet. Because sleeping is so important, you really want to feel and even test out a bed pillow before you buy it. No, you get it from Amazon, and, and then you, you test it out, it. and then you set it back. It's yeah. easy. Yes, because that's wrong. Pets. I would not. <laughs> I wouldn't want my pet shipped to me, for sure. I would feel bad about that. No, we did buy the chickens uh, from MyPetChicken.com. See? That's different, though. So that would be a great area. I don't think I'd get a dog. Uh, so. <laughs> so where we got our cats, Okay. It, which is called a cattery. I don't, I don't, I've never been to such a thing. Okay. This is in North Georgia. And it's like a giant room, and there's special breeds of cats, so there's lots of big cats in there. And he was telling the story. Let me think if I can remember the guy's name. He was a famous NASCAR driver. So the owners of this cattery was telling also us. Also had a cat nursery. Is that <laughs> <laughs> the the, the NASCAR wife. driver was ordering the cats from them, oh. and I guess we got to see them or something, and they were going to ship them on an airplane to this drive. I think it was Tony Stewart. I think it was Tony Stewart. That's pretty if I cool. Remember. Yeah. So this place would ship those cats all over the country. Which, if you want a special breed, like our amazing cats are top of the line special breed. Super fancy cats. <laughs> Super exotic. Welcome back to the Scott Allen Turner Show. If you got a question like answer on the show, high priest of the church of the man. There we go. <laughs> Scott at scottallenturner.com. And you really are missing the show between the show because we were talking about catteries. Not cataracts, catteries and shipping cats all over the country. The show between the show today is things you should not order online. And one of the things in the list was pets. And it depends. I'm going to give that one a, a depends. So we have Myth Busted, Myth Confirmed. And what's the third one? Have you watched Mythbusters before? I don't remember. I don't remember the middle one is. It's like, like the, the gray area. It's like myth sometimes. <laughs> I don't remember because I haven't watched Mythbusters in a, a while. A mystery. <laughs> <laughs> and they had pets on the list. Well, we have MyPetChicken.com. So we have ordered chickens online and had them shipped in. And then our super awesome, amazing, exotic uh, expensive cats were purchased <laughs> in North Georgia back when we lived there at a cattery where they raise cats, special breed for this particular case. We were there, the ladies' owners were walking us through the place and they commented, hey, Tony Stewart, who's a famous NASCAR driver, ordered some cats from us and these are the cats and we're going to ship them on a plane to Tony at, I don't remember, this is a long time ago. Cats are 14, how old are the cats? 14 years old? So this is an old, old story. I don't know why it came to mind. Because we're talking about pets. Pets yes. and ordering pets online. All right, let's get into some of your questions. Our next question comes from Ricky. And he says, 
I'm having trouble staying on target when I create a goal, whether it's debt payoff, savings, anything else. Recently, I got an accountability partner strictly for financial topics. I'm sure this will help, but reading about staying committed really helps me. All right, Ricky. So here's an interesting stat I heard last week from my business group. We meet once a week. The American Society of Training and Development. I'm not sure if they're a big organization, large, small, whatever, but they came out with this study. If you write down your goal, you have a 40% more chance of accomplishing it than if you don't write it down at all. So writing it down, 40% more likely chance of hitting it. Then if you share your goal with someone else, you have over a 65% chance of accomplishing it. So tell a friend, family member, put it out there on the interweb, 65% chance of hitting that goal. If you meet with people in person and share goals, you have a 95% chance of reaching them. 95, that is pretty astronomical. That's a big difference between not writing anything down and actually hitting the goal. Meeting with them, sharing, having an accountability partner, sometimes they're called account buddies, and <laughs> seeing someone in person probably at least once a week. Now, this is not text. This is not FaceTime, Zoom online. This is face-to-face. -face. You're sitting down with somebody once a week over coffee. Here's my goal. And then every week you're getting together. Hey, how'd you do this past week? Or tell me how you did. Tell me how it's coming along. How can I help you meet this goal? Whatever it happens to be. If you do that, then you'll reach your goal, as long as it's one of those smarty pants goals, meaning reasonable. So what does smart stand for? I was just looking at this the other day. It's got to be reasonable. It's got to be a smart goal. There you go. Go over the acronym yourself. We didn't write it down during the show prep. Staying on target with your debt payoff. Certainly writing about it helps. Sharing it helps. Meeting people online and being in Facebook groups. But the one kicker that's going to trump them all is meeting someone in person on a regular basis. And fessing up. Not having to go through that embarrassing moment. Oh, no. The hemming and hawing. How did you do in your goal last week? Eh. You wouldn't be calling in sick for coffee that morning. Well, I, I, I got to do my laundry. I don't have any clean clothes for work today. Sorry, I can't. How did you do in that goal? Ah. All the excuses go out the window <laughs> and you'll hit that goal. All right, smart. M is for measurable. A is for something else. Mm -hmm. S is for another mm. T is for time. R is for realistic. S is for sensible. <laughs> That's not it. I like it. It's pretty close. Now, I'm trying to figure out what button I want to press here. We have so many choices. Do I have any travel tips today? I thought I did. <laughs> I have lots of notes. This is a new system of organizing notes. We've been experimenting yes. every week. This probably is not the best one. Oh, you know what? Let me go to this one. And I can use a cash register. Nice. There we go. Hiring home improvement stores for projects. Why did I think of this the other day? I think I was outside of either Home Depot or Lowe's. Where was I in my travels? Neither here nor there. Often you go to homeowners when you go to Ace Hardware, Home Depot, or Lowe's are the two big ones. You'll see these mom and pop shops that surround them. So wherever Home Depot or Lowe's goes in for my homeowner listeners, you'll see all these places that go up around them. You have a, the tile store and the furniture store, you know, the carpet store, the lighting store. And most people think, why, why in the world would they do that? How can they even compete with Home Depot on price? When people contract with Home Depot for certain kind of services, let's say carpet, Home Depot does not have the Home Depot carpet installation service. It's not part of Home Depot. They don't have their, they have employees there selling carpet. Or when you go into their, the window department and order a bunch of replacement windows, whatever happens to be carpet, probably the most common. So Home Depot is contracting out with service companies for that service. What does that mean? Ka-ching. That's a, a negative ka-ching because the price is going up. Home Depot is getting their cut. They're marking up the prices on the rugs, and then they're passing it off to the service company, which is then going to make some money as well. How do these services outside of these stores survive? It's because they're cutting out the middleman, the middleman being Home Depot or Lowe's. 
So don't discount those places when you're looking for a discount for some of these type of home services. How do I know this? Because my brother used to own one of those stores that was right <laughs> outside Home Depot. <laughs> he owned a carpet, tile, hardwood floor company for many, many years. Right, it was literally right outside of Home Depot's front door is where he had his business and he did very, very well competing with them on price and service and quality. And they eliminated that middleman markup. So when you know that, next time you're into the market for one of those things, anything that the Home Depot might offer as a service, that can be carpet, windows, I'm trying to walk through the roofing, mm -hmm. walking through the Home Depot aisle by aisle. What do they got in there? Uh, 50,000 kinds of bolts. Okay, you get those there from Home <laughs> Depot. That's the only thing you get there at a discount. Whatever it happens to be, you can save some money. Kitchens, they're big in kitchens. They've got all the kitchen cabinets. They've got the kitchen remodel and the kitchen install. Well, go to a cabinet company, see what kind of deal you can get and save a lot of money. Flooring, typically the big one. All right, let's get into maybe a question before the break. <laughs> Absolutely. Our next one comes from Sasha and she says, I'm a new entrepreneur and I'm leaving my secure job after 15 years. I'm excited, but apprehensive about the change. All right, Sasha, awesome. Congratulations Absolutely. as a small business owner. I can appreciate looking or people willing to go out and take that step on your own, just the Amazing freedoms that come with that, and then the amazing stress that comes with that too. After 15 years, that's gonna be a big jump. The one thing that I know from my personal experience and from others as well, especially when I'm counseling them on this particular topic, have a big pile of cash sitting somewhere safe that you can fall back on if something happens. Meaning the business expectations are not in, in line with the reality. Uh, sales do not ramp up as quickly as anticipated. Costs are more costly. Things just take time. You get sick, can't work. That I'd say at least six months. You really want to sleep well. You want 12 months of cash. Yeah, is that going to take a long time to add up? Sure thing. Is it worth the long time it takes to add up and say, sure thing. You're going to sleep a lot better. And when you're not beholden to debts, paying off debts, or having sales, or doing crazy stuff with the business, you make better decisions, which will impact you more positively over the long run. Thanks for the question. Got a question like answered in the show, scott at scottallenturner.com, and you can type it in during the live chat as well. I will check my email this time during the break. I don't think I checked it last hour at all. So I'll see, <laughs> see, if, we, see if any goodies are sitting in there when we come about. And then when we get back from the show, I've got... At least one amazing success story or cool story. All right. Yeah, stay tuned. Is that air you're breathing? It is if you're not living in the matrix. And what better for your breathing than pure, fresh oxygen? The kind of pure, fresh oxygen that can only come from Pat's Potted Plants. Pat's been selling his award-winning potted plants since 1973. Potted plants are great for birthday gifts, housewarming gifts, and are cheaper than a puppy. Only Pat's plants give off 100% pure oxygen by photosynthesis, scientifically proven to be one of those elements on the periodic chart. Unlike pets, which require walking, Pat's potted plants walk themselves, talk to themselves, and do their own pruning. No more costly things that cost money, because Pat's potted plants are green, just like money. And who doesn't love money? Which is why everyone loves a potted plant. Pat ships worldwide, except China, hackers. All of Pat's plants are organically grown in a sanitized nursery in Beijing. I love that country. Give the gift of life. Fresh, 100% pure, high-grade oxygen, only available from Pat's potted plants.
question. I do have a question. I don't know if I can get to it. <clears throat> we'll see. Okay. Mysterious. I think we need to dip into it. Okay. Hey, Anthony, do you have a recording of that last segment? Or did yes. I tell you at some point just to not record this anymore? <laughs> I say we have a stream going. <laughs> yeah, I, I had it recorded. You do have it? He said yeah. Okay, good. Because I do not. Welcome back to the Scott Allen Turner Show. I'm very excited that I made 50 cents last week. You did? I did, yes. Congrats. So we're teaching the kids about money, and they have their daily tasks to do each day, five things, and they get a quarter each day. So it's not an allowance. It's how you do this stuff. It's Part of it's contributing, learning how to have your own money and buy it. And I like helping them out sometimes, so sometimes I'll do a little of their stuff, like making their beds just because they're not – uh, able to pull up the giant cover sometimes <laughs> and they don't really do a good job of it anyway so it's more about uh, trying so i was cleaning out the dishwasher i figured all right i'm gonna clean out this dishwasher because normally it's their job to do it myself and they're around as i'm doing this hey dad we're supposed to be cleaning out the dishwasher they're six twins for new listeners of the show so i'm, I'm just gonna do it because i'm already part way into it so each get a okay, you're you're cleaning out the dishwasher, so that means you get a quarter. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> so they each got a quarter and they paid me fifty cents for emptying out the dishwasher. <laughs> so, it's my, it's my children's success story for the day. Uh little, learning, doing well, proud of the little ones. And then we get the stories like I shared, what was it, last hour? Then I'm worried about my what 
what does my kid think about fancy restaurants? If you <laughs> miss that, a fancy restaurant is defined by where people bring you drinks. Like, I agree. Yeah. I think he's right. <laughs> That's smart. Nailed it on the head. So not spoiled yet. Not spoiled yet. <laughs> All right, the economy continues to go amazing. I think I'll, I'll double check it. Maybe I'll Matty. What did see what the Dow hit last week? For my longtime listeners, you know I have this most amazing crystal ball. We did not pull up the cue from. Oh, it's got to be at least two or three years ago now. When I made the bold prediction back then that the Dow, I think it touched it this past week, Dow being the measure of the stock market. Back then, I predicted the Dow would hit 28,000. And lo and behold, last week it did. So I was right, right? We are currently <laughs> covering at 27,850. Okay, so it touched 28 last week, I believe, for the first time ever, which I pre boldly predicted <laughs> three or four years ago, kind of knowing that's how the stock market works. <laughs> so it's like me predicting, hey, tomorrow's going to be either partly cloudy or partly sunny. One of those two, I can't be wrong. So the news hounds were out this past week with their doom and gloom predictions. About 55% of wealthy investors are bracing for a quote unquote significant drop before <laughs> the end of 2020. And the average person would say, Holy cow, I better act on that because the wealthy people, well, they must know what they're doing because they're wealthy, right? Let me go run out and cash out my 401k or something crazy silly like that. So this is a reminder of what not to do and how to read into these headlines as they're meant to be read. They're meant to be ignored, but this is how I would read this. Okay, so wealthy investors hold 25% of their portfolios in cash, according to this article. Well, duh, it's because they're wealthy. They don't need to have it all in stocks and bonds. They have it in cash. That makes sense. I have money in cash <laughs> because it's for doing other things. That's not a reason to sell everything out of your retirement account. And then it goes on to say, oh, here's the kicker. Though. What, what is a significant drop? It's not defined. <laughs> it sounds scary. The stock market is going to experience a significant drop sometime in the next, let's say the 20th, next five weeks. Is that 3%? Is it 1%? Is it 58.5%? Well, no one knows because they don't say. It's just a made-up term to scare the pants off people and get clicks, get people to mess up their money. Like a significant, it, what, what, if you had a significant amount of weight loss, what would that look like to you? Well, mm. it could be 10 pounds if you're 120 pounds. That's pretty significant for a 120-pound person. That ain't a whole lot of weight to lose. <laughs> if my 60-pound son lost... Uh, Three pounds, that's significant for him because he weighs 60 pounds. He doesn't have a whole lot to lose. For a 600-pound man losing 10 pounds, that is not significant. And if you ever seen my 600-pound life, I think it's on Discovery or the History Channel. We watch that sometimes. Very, very interesting. It the, is. Yes. So don't do what other people are doing because the media is using their fake math, half math, and manufactured math. Stay the course. Yes, there may be a significant drop. Or my next bull prediction could happen in the next five weeks. The Dow could hit 29,000. As soon as that China trade deal goes down. Or Elon lands on Mars, one of those two, that could drive the stock market up for the next five weeks. All right, let's get into some more of your questions. Perfect. The next one comes from Promise, and she says, I'm 23 and a recent university graduate. After spending five years in school studying biotechnology, I'm still confused and just floating. I need help. I want to start earning money, but I don't really know how to go about it. I've tried to do some sales before, but I don't think that I'm a good salesperson. It's beginning to depress me that at my age, I should still be confused. I like fashion and clothes, and I'm currently acquiring a skill of sewing, but I don't even know how to go about establishing that business. I don't want to just go apply for any job. I really want to apply for my job, but at the same time, I like to be my own boss. All right, Promise. Right now, I know you can't see this. Just picture it in your mind. All of these listeners of the Scott Allen Turner Show that are halfway through their careers, they're doing a, what's called a face palm right now. They're taking their hand and like they're smashing it into their face. 23, and you're confused. What? <laughs> you're just a baby. <laughs> you're just a baby. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's normally confused at 23. It's normal to be confused at 43 and 63, too, when it comes to <laughs> careers. That's why people change careers two and three times over their life. And typical career, typical career might last 10 or 15 years. That's where those, those numbers come from, 23, 43, 63, different chapters in life. Uh, if you haven't figured it out yet, that's kind of normal. Keep kicking the can, looking around, and figure it out over a period of time. Um. Hoping there's not a whole lot of student debt associated with this five-year degree you just got in biotech. If you want to sew, mm, okay. <laughs> if this, if you're drawing a clean line in the sand, meaning there's you've got this expensive degree, but there's no student loans or any issues to pay off behind it, all right, make the turn. If there is, maybe it's an opportunity to work in biotech for a period of time, pay down those debts. Then, as a side gig or side learning project, maybe learn the sewing business, maybe tie the two together. If you got into biotechnology for some reason and stuck with it for five years, I will go out on the assumption that there's some level of interest there. Might not be a 10 out of 10, maybe it's a three or four out of 10. I do not know how you combine biotech and sewing. There's gotta be something there though that you can do. I bet there's some cool robot clothes out there. Robot clothes, yes, those, Japanese dogs that do all kinds of things. Coming up on Christmas time, I haven't done my Christmas time toy research yet, but there's got to be something out there <laughs> that you can sew some clothes on and make a killing on for this year's hot toy, whatever it happens to be. I guess they don't really announce those till after Thanksgiving. I could be wrong. So those Black Friday sales, that's when you yeah, really find Yeah, the Black out. Friday sales, the Cyber Monday sales. We've got all of, most of our Christmas stuff up. Yeah. Do those things. And realize it's okay to not know what you didn't want to do right now. That's pretty normal. And at age 23, you got ample time to figure it out. Thanks for the question. All right, I got a minute before the break. Let's see what I got. Uh, my tale of earning 50 cents on the, the dishwasher was pretty enthralling. <laughs> Another one of my $5 words. All right, uh, I got time for this. Find my bread alert. No. There we go. <laughs> Merrill, Marilyn Manson. Yes, right. uh, I don't have a funny name for this company. So, so the, a couple companies came out and got slapped by. Oh, though there's the music. I guess we'll get to this after the break. For charging parents who had 529 plans, overcharging them, so they get hit with a big fine. They admit they did no wrongdoing. Words. The words are always throwing me off. <laughs> <laughs> happens every time. Can somebody come and I just want to know. I want to know. If I could run through the fire, I could conquer the night. If I can make it, if I can. All right, Anthony, I hope you've got that one too. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with this today. <laughs> it's just not working. <laughs> I think I already asked you this, but y'all y'all are staying here for Thanksgiving? Seeing the family here? We are, yes. Awesome. Other than the Blue Man group. We may yeah. I looked at Glow and uh, Glen Rose, but then the Blue Man tr group trumped that trip. Oh, Going to Fort Worth for the day, that's a trip in itself. Oh yeah, it really <laughs> is. It really, really is. Do y'all make classic Thanksgiving dinner? No, we are going to the Four Seasons for their oh, buffet. Oh, yeah. That's fun. A lot less work, too. <laughs> yeah, we did not want to. My wife's attitude is spend three days cooking for a meal that's going to last 30 minutes. No thanks. <laughs> yeah, you can just have those three days off. Enjoy that family time. So we went to a buffet. About. We've been to three buffets. Years ago, we went to one before a Cowboys game, and that was at the Marriott down in Irving, so that was kind of nice. Last year, we went to can't remember the name of the hotel. So this year we're going to try the Four Seasons, since we're not going on a trip to Mexico. That's true. That song is annoying. I'm um, kind of that one, too.
Uh, can you Google the price of something for me, please? Absolutely. It's what are we a, looking for? It's called a Ducati. D-U-C? Mm-hmm. A-T-I. A-T-I. All right. Mm-hmm. Is it a bike? Yep. My buddy used to own one, and it was awesome. I just want to the price of like a new one. Let's see. So they've got lots of lots of fancy bikes. Discover more. Okay. It looks like their cheapest one is. Hmm. $9,250. Oh, okay. That's Cheapest, less than I, that's less than I would have thought. And it goes up to 12300 Oh, I thought those bikes were like 30 or 40 grand. They look nice. But yeah. I guess it's just Harleys that cost that much. Those Harleys, they, they all have charging, man. Like, they started at 24. <laughs> yeah, like for real. <laughs> Welcome back to the Scott Allen Turner Show. I'm going to do my story here first so that we have time to get it. And then I've got a question that came in from email from Miss Tyrannosaurus Flex. (laughs) 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 I'm probably not going to get to all of it because I need more information, but we'll get to that as well. How long is short-term disability coverage? Hmm. If you're asking that question. Employee receives short-term disability coverage for nine to 52 weeks. The length of coverage is based on the policy the employee has. Coverage kicks in between 1 and 14 days after the employee is unable to work. And to bridge the gap between the employee's inability to work and the short-term disability coverage, the employee can use sick days. What is that getting at? If for some reason someone can't work, they get into an accident, there's something that most employers have called short-term disability. Cover those costs during a short time away from work sick days vacation days they usually get thrown in first as well and then we get on into the the long-term disability which is for longer term issues and it's the yours is yeah switches to longer term coverage so here's a story from a friend of mine his name is john he posted a facebook a couple days ago on october 27th 2019 so this is three weeks ago i was riding my motorcycle and john owned owns slash owned a Ducati. We looked that up during the break. It's uh, it's a race bike. He's driving it to meet up with some friends when a Tahoe failed to yield. That is an SUV. The Tahoe pulled out in front of me, causing me to T-bone his vehicle and go flying over the hood. I ended up with, all right, brace yourself. Fractured arm in several places requiring a plate. Two broken ribs. Multiple traverse process fractures of my spine. I'll stop right there. We learned about what those are. Those are bone breaks that they can't put a cast on because they're in your spine, i.e. very painful. And it continues. Two fractures of my left leg, a ruptured bladder, a little bit of road rash, and the painful one, he says, if, <laughs> if that wasn't painful enough, he's got a fractured pelvis requiring a plate in the front, a screw in the back to attach the torn ligament. And someone was telling me he can't lift more than a cell phone in his hand for the next six to eight weeks. That's rough. Yeah. I continues on. I would not wish this on anyone, but I can say that I am truly blessed. I am blessed to be alive. He says, the helmet saved my head. So if you're riding one of those race bikes like a Ducati, you typically wear a helmet, even though in the great country of Texas, you are not required to. (laughs) I'm blessed to not be paralyzed. I am blessed to have family and friends that I absolutely love show up when there's literally nothing I could do for them in return. Also, I'm incredibly blessed to have thousands of people that I know and don't know praying for me and my recovery. So, yeah, real stuff happens to real people. That's my friend John and some other friends of ours, very good friends, who happen to be our Longtime friends, business partners, we hang out, we vacation together. John is staying with them, so they are looking after him. He is in their house now for the next couple months while he recovers. Because he basically can't move around. He certainly can't work. Uh, He can't lift anything. But he's got good spirits, and hey, he's alive. 
So when you're thinking about, I know a lot of listeners listen to the show. Well, at least that's not my situation. At least I don't have two hundred fifty thousand dollars in debt. I've only got one hundred eighty thousand dollars in debt. Well, at least you made it to work today. You can get out of bed. Um, my torn labrum and my shoulder seems pretty insignificant now. <laughs> and I can get up out of this chair and walk around. I'll be able to go to the doctor this afternoon on my own. A, it's important to be thankful for what you've got. Uh, B, when it comes to your financial house, protecting it is equally important through short-term disability insurance, long-term disability insurance, emergency funds. That network we talked about last week on the show, your your team, which includes those people who are going to be there for you. And I make fun of having your own SWAT team if you get abducted by aliens in a foreign land or on Mars, whatever it happens to be. And then those really, really good friends and family members who you can go uh, stay with <laughs> are going to look after you, mm -hmm. show up expecting nothing in return. We all need to have those people on our team. And so John does. There we go. All right, let's do, I think we got, I'm gonna, I promised Miss Tyrannosaurus Rex. Now, the last time I changed something on the screen, bad things happened. <laughs> Sent this email in. I'm going to yeah, slowly scoot it over here, make sure nothing happens. All right. <laughs> I'm going to have to paraphrase this. The question came in. I'm going to summarize it real quick. Someone who's got a whole life policy looking to change states and move, should that policy, it's got $3,800, yeah, $3,800 cash balance in a whole life policy, cashed out to pay for moving expenses. The first thing that when it comes to life insurance is kind of ties into what we just talked about in the last segment with John's case is protecting the financial house. Never cancel a life insurance policy until you have another life insurance policy in its place. The worst thing that can happen is something cancels a policy and then they can't get a new one for whatever reason. Something crops up on the medical report or some underwriter says, no way, or the policy is too expensive. So investigating those things first. Would I cash out a whole life policy? Again, I don't know enough details about the policy to pull $3,800 out of it without having any information. Yeah, I mean, if it's me, I know the the downsides of the whole life policies, super expensive on the front end. When you factor in an equivocal term life policy and taking the difference in premiums over an extended period of time, investing that difference, you end up with more money than if you had not, I think I'm getting this right, not just not purchased the whole life policy to begin with. So there's more factors in there than just go, hey, cancel it and pay for the moving expenses. If that's all information I had, I'd be irresponsible for me to give you an answer on that. And then you can use a service that we have referenced on our website, which is very handy since I can't remember the name of the link. There are different, three different organizations out there. They can review an insurance policy for you and give you a yay or nay. Third parties, they look at your specific financial situation and they say, you know what, this policy is really not that great for you. Or you know what, you can get a term policy and do this instead. Or sometimes they even say, yeah, okay, you've paid into this whole life policy uh, long enough, you're past all the, the premiums and everything, you've got this cash flow, it might make a little more sense to hang on to it for a while. That would be my short answer. Check out one of those things. If I had more information, I could give you better direction for that. Uh, congratulations on the move, though. A couple minutes left in the show. Back to protecting your financial house. Here's another one. As I've talked about on the show, who do you have to have in your camp? A lawyer, so you can get free legal advice. Oh, you know what? I can't see this. Scoot it over. i got to be very careful on my laptop here. Things have been wigging out today. There we go. Ben and Jerry's ice cream that I love. One of the protections around here is to have an umbrella policy because you can be sued for anything or any reason by anyone. It don't matter. You'll find some Yahoo lawyer who will sue for no other reason than the hoping for a big payday. Ben and Jerry's being sued over their claims that their products come from happy cows. Yay. <laughs> How dare you? Those cows aren't happy. <laughs> They polled the cows and five out of 10 cows said they were not happy and the other five said they were. Therefore, Ben and Jerry's is being sued 
I don't know how the cows acknowledge one or the other. So Ben and Jerry's is being sued for false advertising and treating the cows amazingly well. They're milking them. I'm sure they're petting them and feeding them the high grain, high grade grain. But really, how dare they? Honestly. <laughs> Say those cows are happy without asking them first. You can be sued for anything. Be wary. Be wary, my friends. <laughs> those are the words. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in, as always. From all of us here at Studio X, we appreciate you listening to every show. Please share the show. That's all we ask. And until next time, live like a financial rock star. 